Look at that fit. That is beautiful. If you saw the bonus video a couple of weeks ago where we built the Retro Direct drive for the triplet tandem, today we're building the tandem. An essential element to any decent bike frame build is a fixture. The fixture holds all the frame tubes in place so they can accurately be tacked then welded. Bike frame fixtures can cost thousands of dollars, but a trick I learned in the frame building class I took at the UC Davis Extension is to use MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's flat and easily squared. Here we're gluing two pieces together to establish a base, then we'll attach a wall with square support gussets that we'll bolt all the frame tubes onto. We've got the frame geometry specs from Surly, and we know that the seat tube angle on this frame is 73 degrees. So we'll back the frame up to this end block here, and we will establish a line of 73 degrees on this backboard, and that will allow us to align the frame properly. Now to make sure the frame is in a straight line, what we're going to do is measure off the back wall here and then we're actually going to bolt the frame to the wall. So one of the alignment devices we're going to use to square the frame to the fixture is washers. Okay, now what we did there was we marked our line on the, on the backboard and then we aligned the seat tube to that line. Then we bolted this with a bunch of a stack of washers in there to space it off the back. We bolted it up and then uh, we needed a little spacer up here to get the alignment right so it was still the same in relation to uh, perfectly parallel to the backer board here. Just like we did on the rear frame, we're going to mark the uh, angle on the front, on the middle frame. Okay, what I've done here is I've aligned the seat tube to the original line that I drew that is uh, the factory spec of that angle. And that ensures that the rider on this frame is in the proper position. It also makes sure that the crank is at the right height in relation to the ground because this angle directly affects the rear axle height. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this head tube and the head tube of this other frame and we're going to install a single vertical head tube tying the two together. Now what I've done here is I have my uh, protractor at 90 degrees. I've come in here and it's, it's probably hard to see on camera but I have marked a vertical line so the next step is I'll cut this head tube off, then use my tubing notcher to uh, make new notches for the new vertical head tube. Before we do that, one thing I want to do is make a stabilizing clamp of some sort, because when I break these two welds free, uh, that, that could allow this to move. There could be spring tension built up in, in these two tubes, and who knows what could happen. So here's what I did, is I, I drilled a hole straight in and drilled a hole in at the appropriate angle, and now... We will clamp that and uh, I'll just drill bolt holes through here and put bolts and that will hold that solid. Then I can cut that off and, and notch the ends. And I gotta do the same on this frame too. Okay, now I, I have my stabilization braces on. I can cut these head tubes off then get this thing on the notcher and, and bore my new holes. Now aligning this can be kind of problematic and uh, you know we've got two different sized tubes here I need to punch a hole through both of them uh, so I can't level against the two tubes because they, uh, the only thing common is a center line that I don't have a way to read. Um, but here's what I can do is I can, I can make sure that my boring arbor is level and then come over here to a piece of tubing that is parallel to the boring arbor or at least on the same plane, and make sure that is also level. Okay, we hit a couple of snags, one of which is the tubing notcher is a piece of garbage. After just one use, uh, the bushing in it is so sloppy now that I can't, I can't even use it again. Another thing is neither of the two head tubes that I cut off the frames are long enough so, I, I do have another head tube, uh, but it's a different size, so I'm going to have to recut the notches. 
So since I've lost the use of the tubing notcher, I went over to dogfeatherdesign.com, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, they have an online notch pattern creation tool, and uh, you input the uh, tubing sizes and the angles, and it gives you a pattern that you uh, basically glue onto the tube, and you can use it to cut out the notch and, uh, and give you a good fit. So we're going to try that next. So there's my notch pattern. Now I'll glue it onto the tube uh, and, uh, and grind away everything it tells me to grind away. So I'll start by grinding off the top and then I'll use my down tube to uh, make sure the fit is right and also uh, use it to align the bottom cut. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. To get the angles for the next cuts, what we're going to have to do is orient this frame at the appropriate angle, and then we can take the measurements just like we did on the other frame. Okay, now just as I did before, I will measure this angle. And then we'll come in and measure this angle also. Now all I have to do is grind down to that line and I'll have my perfect uh, notch for the tubing match. Okay, so here's what I have for my common head tube and the two frames tied together. Now I need to uh, triangulate that by using this uh, tube down here to join them at the bottom. Alright, so I have the connection between the back two frames all worked out. We've got the triangulating tube, the central head tube that's tying it all together. Now we need to tie the two front frames together and that means disassembling this so we can get the fitting done. With everything that we've done so far, uh, all the tubes that we've worked with, except for this head tube, is what they call double butted. And what that means is that the tube is thicker at the end than it is in the middle. Now, this, uh, these frames were double butted tubes, but I know that I'm close enough to the end that I am in the area of the double butting. And then uh, down here, where I added this, this is not double butted, this tube, uh, but I'm in the double butted area of the frame tubes there too. I'm confident of that. Now getting over here into the front, I've already done the layout on my backboard here. So I have the angles and stuff. Okay, so one thing I need to do is I need to cut this side first. That way I can know where to place the uh, template on the other side. And that could actually be derived mathematically, but uh, I am not that good with this, so I'm just going to do it old school and just fit it together manually. We'll cut the first one. I know that I'm within the double butted area of the tube. I've marked over here on the, uh, on the other end, so I'll be in the double butted area of that tube also. And I know where the double butting is because I have the actual blueprint of each tube. This one, for example, has 105 millimeters of double butting on one end and 95 millimeters on the other end. So uh, we have plenty of room to play with there. Then moving on to the bottom tube, this, this one only has about 60 millimeters of double butting on one end and 200 millimeters of double butting on the other end. But uh, we're going to use almost all that tube anyway. Once I get these last two tubes cut and fitted, all I'll have to do then is uh, prep the actual weld surfaces by making sure that all the paint's gone and uh, washing it with acetone. Then we'll bring in the welder and weld it all together. Look at that fit. That is beautiful. Take a look here. We had an intersection with the seat tube, so I just kind of freehanded that in. Now we have a similar situation over here. And, and what I've done is I've just butted this tube up against the... Uh, 
the bottom bracket and I, I marked where the seat tube is. Then I came in with a piece of tubing and just, just marked the curvature. Now I'm going to grind that out and we'll fit that together manually. Okay, so the frame fit and fixture is all pretty much done. All that's left now is to disassemble it, clean all the joints where there's going to be welds, wash them with acetone after all the paint and everything else has uh, is gone away, and then uh, put it all back together, have the welder come in, tack it all, and then uh, remove it from the fixture and weld it up. So the next video will include the complete assembly of this rear handlebar holding apparatus, tacking of the entire frame, and welding it all. Anyway, that's all for this week. We'll finish this up in the next video, and thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.